being culture. I cut my way out podcast. Podcast. I can't see you. I can We only cry like I put in my hand. I got a I used to dream as a kid on the porch of the crib and make it big and one day in Georgia. Mic check, mic check. We're here. Absolutely. Back at it again. Back, Back at, at it again. Um, I cut my way out podcast everywhere where you can listen to podcasts. Uh, got new intro music. Shout out to uh, Dennis and his crew. Yeah, D- DC. DC. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it going forward. How you been? Man, I've been good. I've been good. good. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Can't complain about anything. What about yourself? I'm doing pretty good myself. Okay. Doing pretty good myself. Happy to be back in the, in the presence of the Behind these mics, absolutely. We got a special guest. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Got got a legendary guest. Legendary <laughs> guest. Take yeah, it away. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for all of you listeners, thank you um, for being back with us. Another episode of um, I Cut My Way Out podcast. Today we have um, a very, 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 very special guest. Um, legendary um, in our community in Champaign, Illinois. Um, he's a longtime barber and he's also, um, one half the owner of Rose and Taylor Barbershop, which has been a staple in our community, um, for over 50 years. Um, he's been very inspirational, um, to, to our community, um, to the barbers growing up. And we're here to pay homage, um, because without barbers like, um, this gentleman, we I, I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be cutting our way out, and we wouldn't have this opportunity. So, um, without further ado, we would like to bring to you um, Mr. Joe Taylor. How you doing there, Mr. Joe? Okay. All well, right. Good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on your show. Man, we are extremely um, honored and extremely excited. Um, not many people get the opportunity, you know, to to sit down and. Um, talk to barbers from the past and um, who have spent as many years behind the chair and having ownership um, such as yourself. So we're delighted to have you on. Extremely delighted. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we so we're gonna we're gonna dive right right into these questions. So um, for for me, I, I know over the years, of course, my uncle cut with you um, for a number of years. So got an opportunity to, you know, be around the barbershop and just observe and, um, you know, what was part of my growing up experience, like a lot of us here in the Champaign-Urbana community. So I, I would like to know, and, and for our listeners, when did you first begin to, to cut hair? What, what took you down that path? Well, uh, um, um friend of mine I went to school with, he, he's always talking about being a barber. Okay. And then we lived, uh, in 1961, we live across the street from Tommy Barbershop. Okay, okay, okay. And and that was the barbershop in the community prior to you guys having Rose and Taylor. So did it, did Tommy's Barbershop kind of have the reputation at that time that Rose and Taylor um, ended up having? Yeah, uh, Tommy was a new barber shop. They did it in 1960. Okay, so so was that the at that time was that the first black owned barber shop in the community? Uh, no, it wasn't, but okay. it was the first new one. Okay, you know. So, okay, so it was the first new one. Okay, all right, and so at that but that point in time, so you having a barber shop across the street and and having a friend. So what what were the next steps? Um, when when did you decide to pursue it, and, and what did you do um, in your pursuit to become a barber? I went to barber school um, in nineteen September nineteen sixty three. Wow! Wow! I went on a grant. Uh, the mayor of the city of Champaign. Uh huh. He also worked for the state, and he had a grant that uh, would help. You know. Uh, those that wouldn't go into college, you know, okay. get into a trade. Okay, okay. And where was it that, that you attended barber school? In Chicago. Okay, okay. And what was the name of that um, institution? Uh, Mola. Mola. Mola Barber College. Yeah. Okay. Stand on, 
and on State Street okay. in uh, Chicago. Okay, okay. And so, so you attended there. And at that time, what, what were the um, kind of what was the setup of the barber college? What were the the requirements, and, and you know, what did you have to do to obtain your barber t- license? Uh, we had to take a class in theory, you know. Okay. And uh, that wasn't easy. Right. Well, the, the first three tests I took, I took, I got a zero. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a zero, huh? <laughs> yeah, so I had to buckle down. Yeah, so it, so it had to get to it. And so what, what were the, the requirements in terms of, of the number of hours? Um, oh, 1,850 hours. Wow, 1,850. Wow. So so today the average number of hours is 1,500. Wow. Okay. Right. And he remember it too. Right. <laughs> remember it like it was yesterday. Remember your first test scores and everything, huh? It took nine months. Okay. So it was nine months full, full time? Um, yeah. Five days a week? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and approximately, so was that a big trade then? So were, were there a lot of um, students um, in the barber school at that particular time? Oh yeah, it was. Okay. They, had, they had two schools. Okay. Okay. Smaller had two schools. Okay. So mm-hmm. so it was pretty popular. So so cutting hair has always been been big in our um, communities. Okay. I have a question, Mr. I have a question. Can I call you Mr. Taylor, Joe? What what do you prefer? It's up to you. Joe will be good. <laughs> you should, okay. Okay, Joe. I have. I just have one question. Uh, so going to Chicago um, to barber school, did it ever? cross your mind to stay in Chicago after you got your license or was the plan always to return to Champaign uh, when you got your barber license? Oh, I didn't have no plan what, what I was going to do, mm-hmm. but I did stay, I did stay up there while I'm working the shop okay. on uh, West Roosevelt Road. Oh, uh, West Side. Okay. 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 Yeah. And how, lo- how long were you, were you there cutting hair? Probably about a month and a half. They was working from eight to eight Woo. <laughs> at, that, at that time. They was put, putting in big hours. And so, and, at, uh, go ahead. It was union. Okay. And uh, plus, uh, I lost my talk. <laughs> so, no. so, so when you say union, um, yeah. can you kind of explain to us how how the union worked at that particular time? Oh, the, oh you have to have a license for you to work in the shop. Okay. You know? Okay. Can work with that life. Okay. And plus the state, plus the state, come around uh, about every three months and check on wow. your life and your sanitation, sterilization. Okay. So, so they made sure that everybody was was on on top of the game. So you weren't just gonna fall in a barbershop with no license and think that you were gonna cut hair and make money. Okay. Correct. Okay. 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 And and so after completing barber school, standing in Chicago and realizing that they were working, you know, 12 hour days, you know, five days a week. So you decided then to return um, back to Champaign, correct? Yeah, I did. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. So so after completing that, returning here, can you tell us kind of your journey that that led to um, what became the most legendary barbershop in, in our area still um, to this day, um, which is, is Rose and Taylor. Can you kind of tell us, you know, when you came back, kind of how things worked themselves out to the point where Rose and Taylor, um, you know, be, became a reality? Well, when I came back, I, I had a part-time job before I left. So I started back working part-time at the uh, as enough. Okay. Grocery store down on South Neal. Okay. And then I finally got a job at Murrayfield Barbershop. Mm. Okay. Down on uh, it's on First Street. Okay. Two ten North First Street. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you know where the bakery? You know where the bakery at now? Yep. Yep. Right on that corner there. Okay. Okay. And so from from that time, so you worked there how long? Oh, quite a while. Yeah. They weren't work. Leroy started working there with me. You know, okay. So okay. We worked together there. Right. And for those who don't know Leroy Knox, that, that's my uncle. That was one of your fellow barbers that, that you, you worked with. He worked in your shop. So, okay. And, and so you guys worked together from, from that point. Um, 
And so at, at some point in time, did you work in Tommy's Barbershop before the whole Rose and Taylor um, barbershop began? How, how did that work itself out? I, I worked at a few more, uh, couple more shops before then. Okay. That. Okay. So, so you, uh, go ahead. When the, when the AFO come in, it, it really hurt the business. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, it makes sense, getting but yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, he he said that really that really makes sense. It kind of yeah. makes sense, but I mean, uh, yeah, because people growing their hair, they're not coming in as often to get their hair cut. Right. I would imagine. So, how did you guys make that work for you? Well, I had a part-time job. I kept mm. my part-time job. Mm. So okay. Mm. I went to, uh, went to work on University in uh, Fifth, uh, Morris Clark. Okay. We, we, uh, okay. Wow. I worked there with him for a while, and then I went down and worked with Henry. Okay. Yeah, he, Henry was my barber when I was a, yeah. a child. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so, so when Henry when Henry came in, he worked with Leroy and I there for a few okay. for a okay. few weeks okay. before he got his own. Mm, okay, so he delved right in and got his own. Okay. So Leroy had one down at Tommy Barbershop. Okay. So he let me uh he contacted me. Uh Tommy I think Tommy had died, so he let me know the chair open. Okay. Okay. So I went down there. Okay. And so, them. okay. And so it, it was still Tommy's barbershop at that point in time. So, was, yes. so, so Tommy was a barber as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was a businessman. He had a barbershop and a record shop. Mm, okay. And okay. Okay. And so, so then at that time, how how long was it before Tommy's barbershop then became Rose and Rose and Taylor? How did that work out? Maybe about a month or so. Really? Uh, his wife didn't want to keep all them books and stuff, so she sold us the business inside. Okay. That was in 1974. Okay. And and so that in 74. So that so you you and Lum, and for those who don't know, Lum is yeah. the, the the other half of of um, Rose and Taylor. So yeah, so Lum Rose, Lum Rose and. Joe Taylor. Okay. So he was already there. My alarm was already there. Okay. And, yeah. and so you guys decided that that um was it kind of like a situation where, hey, I don't want to keep jumping barbershops or was it a long time goal um for both of you guys that you wanted to own your own barbershop in the first place? It was my goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my Okay. So, so it just just played it played itself out right, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so you purchased it in 1974. So at 1970, the business, the business, yes, the business part. Okay. So, so what what entail? So when you say the business, what does that entail? The everything inside the the establishment, the net, like can you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, they had an apartment upstairs on top. Okay. And and she and his wife stayed up there, you know. Okay. Mrs. Trish. Okay. So did it did it remain Tommy's barbershop for a while or did you guys no, go straight? No, we we changed it then. Okay. Okay. And and they had, what, a, they had an article in the newspaper. Really? Tommy's under new management. Okay. Uh, okay. And and so what went into I I know the you know, your last name Rose and Taylor. Um, what went into you guys choosing the name of the shop? I know some people sometimes, you know, catchy barbershops. Was that just a thing? So like you said, Tommy's barbershop was named after him. And you had the Rose and Taylor. Was it just during those times that, you know, it, it was pretty natural to, to um, name your barbershop after yourself? No, I don't know. We just came up with uh, Mr. Rose and... Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I I I wanted to know that because today is just it just has a ring to it, yeah. and and it just it might make you think that they really put a lot of thought right. into the name, right? Right. But 
you know, right. listening to, you know, Tommy's and right. things like that. It's just, hey, my last name, Rose, right. your last name, Taylor, Rose and Taylor. And it just, the rest right. is history. Right, <laughs> right, right. Because right. Cause that, that name still rings to me to this day. And, and I don't know if it's so much because, you know, I'm just part of the community that, um, it was created in, but it, but it's still, that name still rings. It, it's simple as it may be because you guys were just, you know, using your last name. So, okay. So, so, so going in, so, so today we have the Rose and Taylor legacy. Um, everybody who is, you know, um, from Champaign Urbana, um, and I assume anybody that has any connection with Champaign Urbana that's not even from here, um, is familiar. Um, with the shop Rose and Taylor, it, it served um, many University of Illinois students, uh, many community people, many professionals, um, all walks of life. Did, did you guys set out to create the legacy that that name has today? Or was it more so just like, hey, you know, th this is our barbershop. This is what we want to name it. We just want to work in our barbershop. Was there any thought behind how big you wanted it to be, what you wanted it to do, if you wanted it you know, to create that legacy? What was the thought behind it? Well, the credit go to Tommy Trish and Lom Rose because Lom was the manager of the shop when Tommy had it. Okay. And we just carried on what they had started. Okay, okay. So Somebody went up a little notch. Okay. We did, we did some changes. We didn't, everybody would close on Wednesday, so we, we stopped that. We started closing on Monday. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So barbershops were closed on Wednesday at the time. And so you guys yeah. kind of set it up. And that, that's interesting because now if you go all around the nation, you know, barbershop hours for the most part are Tuesday through Saturday and closed yeah. on Sunday and Monday. Wow. Okay. Yeah, see, that had, to, that had to do with the union, you know, mm. in Chicago and stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everybody was following that guideline. Okay. Well, we wanted a long weekend. Right, right. Make makes sense. I I'm not gonna lie to you. I enjoy having that Sunday and that Monday off. I I really do. <laughs> yeah. So so once you guys started cutting hair, like just as a professional, what were your your first um, prices when you first started cutting hair? What were the prices back in the the sixties and the seventies? Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't very much. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got some posters outside. Uh huh. Shoe uh -huh. sham was a dollar and a half in 1974. Wow. I don't think the bar. And how much for the haircuts? I'm not sure. I had to look it up. Okay. Okay. I think it's uh, couldn't be number one five dollars. Really? Now, now in the 60s when you started barber school, how much were haircuts at that time? No, I mean 60. I started in 63. Or, or 63. Okay. Do you remember? Uh, I think about 75 cents. Wow. Wow. The, the, industry, the industry has come an extremely, extremely long way. <laughs> as a client, not I'm not a barber, Mr. Taylor, but as yeah, a client, okay. as a client, what yes. I, I would love to be paying those prices today, like <laughs> <laughs> they go they gonna take advantage of us, huh, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> okay. Man, that 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 is amazing. Just you know, you being one of one of the um one of the, the legendary barbers and, and, and just paving the way for us to do what it is that we do as barbers today, that that's that's amazing, and and of course you know everything has has gone up and you know just the, the economy, but just to think you know in the '60s you know seventy five cent now, you know I know of barbers that are charging one hundred fifty two hundred dollars a head. That is just absolutely amazing, and I feel like go back to you guys as an era and and you guys and you know the barbers before you made it possible for us to do. Um, what it is that, that we do man that's did, 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 did you ever envision like starting then and just knowing now that that it could become this lucrative could you ever imagine that somebody would have paid 150 200 dollars for a haircut oh uh, yeah because when i was up in chicago in barber school i used to this one particular shop started uh 
uh, entertainment. They used to go there. They used to spend quite a bit to get their hair did. Mm, okay. Yeah, and stuff okay. like that. Okay. Okay, so you, even then, the, you know, the, the those who were more popular and famous, they, they were paying more for their services. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. Wow. So, so, as barbershop owners, did you guys um, do commission or, or booth rent um, at the time? We, we, most we did was uh, commission. Okay. Okay. And, was, uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, what was the commission split? It depends. Uh, we we start off at uh, seventy five. I'm seventy thirty. Okay. Okay. And then, then you know, might depend on later on, and it's changed, you know, a little bit. Okay. 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 And at at some point, did you guys ever go to the booth rent side of things? Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I did okay. when I. Um, uh, I, when Lum got ready to retire, I bought him out, so okay. we went to boot it then. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And do do you think one or or the other is is more beneficial, or do you think they're about equal? Uh, to some barbers, it's beneficial because you know they don't have a, a lot of custom and, and they didn't have all the experience some barbers had, so. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, I have a, I have a question. Um, you know, we we've done this show. We we we've talked to, to other barbers, and you know, we always ask them about their top clippers. So, what are your favorite clippers? to cut do have have they I mean I would imagine the more things change the more they stay the same do you have like some of your go-to clippers that you definitely needed and they and that you used or, or basically what's your top top two or three clippers that you cut with it, it depend on what kind of haircut they're getting okay. you know, if they're getting the clothes one you know what they're going to use on that but oh, okay. About the same, about the same as everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. So when 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 did the the Andes Master? When did that come out? Oh boy! Ooh, long. I had to look that up. Really? So so is that something you were using back in in the in the seventies? Was that yeah. a pretty pretty popular oh, clipper oh, then? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where did you where did you buy your clippers? Uh, like if you needed to, if you if a set went out, did like did was Sal? I mean, I, Sally's. I'm, yeah. <laughs> where would you all go? Would you did you have to order them or have a catalog? Yeah, we, or? We, yeah, we used to order them out of catalog. Out of catalog. Okay. okay. So so there were no barber um, supply shops in the in the town at that time. Not at first, he wouldn't. Really? Okay. Okay. So we uh, Okay. Now, with 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 the legacy and and so so overall, you've been cutting hair, you know, well over forty, fifty years, right? Um, fifty five. Fifty five, to be exact. Thank you for setting me straight. <laughs> fifty five years, and you've maintained um, a license that whole time. I, I remember coming over um, to your home. And I seen you still, and this may have been a year and a half ago, you still had a valid barber's license in the state of Illinois. Am I correct? Yeah, you got to. Wow. That, that is, is, is absolutely amazing. So, so cutting hair for, for 55 years, what does barbering mean to you? Oh, boy. It, it means it, it meant too much for me, you know. I really, uh, we we had a few a few things that I did. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have time to do. Okay. My like my two oldest daughters. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't have time to take care of them like I should have, you know, uh, raise them. Okay. So I had to let their grandmother raise them. Just, just because the, the barbering, it, it took so much. Of you your know, time. I'm all into, the, I'm all into the barbering. You know, right. trying to make it. You know, right, right. Trying to, yeah. trying to financially take care of everything. Yeah, we worked a lot of hours. Though. We used to work from uh, like what, eight thirty, nine o'clock to seven, mm-hmm. eight o'clock sometime at night right. here in Champaign. Right. So, yeah. so once you you started cutting. Would you say, and, and I imagine 55 years, would, would is it safe to say that it became your true passion? Yeah, it did. Yeah. I'm sorry, it did. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a, a beautiful thing. And I know sometimes you, you put that passion in, sometimes you miss out on, on other areas. Um, but you, you definitely have, have, have made a, a legacy, you and Mr. Lum and my Uncle Leroy. And, you know, I remember... Um, Harry used to cut my hair. Um, you know, you had had so many um, great barbers there dur- during oh, yeah. those times. Um, another question I have: like during during the time that you cut, during the early years, were there segregated barber shops at that particular time? Uh, when I first started off, uh, it's had we had uh, at that time. When I went to Freddie Barbershop, he, he was telling me that uh, they used to cut only white hair mm. when his uncle had it, but his uncle sold it out to him. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And then we had one downtown called Van Barbershop. They only cut white hair. Really? All black barbershop. Mm, all black barbershop, but only cut yeah, all uh, white hair. Yeah, that's, that's all they cut. Wow. And, uh, that's, wow. You know, so nothing. They don't fresh beat that. Uh, I can't think of that guy's name. What Rose and Taylor's at now? Uh huh. He was there then. You know, an old shop. Wow. All black barber shop. Could only wear that. That's that's. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Wow. How, how 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 far we have have come in, in some areas. Um. So we got a got a few few more questions for you. We're not gonna hold you too long. We know you're on, you're on a schedule. Um, but another question I have: how were you, how are you guys able to just maintain the shop for for so many years? Um, one one of the things that I loved, and and I still think about it from a business aspect today. Um, all the personalities seem so. Like everything matched so well, like for you, for you and just to look back um, in my childhood and even when I you know, got in high school to look back and look at you and, and Lum, your personalities, everybody's personality balanced each other's out. And so it was a great time, you know, going in the barbershop, you know, you 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 were low key. My uncle Leroy singing, dancing, smiling, you seeing his gold tooth on the side like every everybody, you know, it was a, a, a great work environment how did you guys maintain um that level of professionalism in that environment and just keep the barbershop going for so long we put the customer first okay. first of all and then uh we try to tune things down you know right uh when when families come in you know like women bring their kids in right, right. sometimes we had the whole family come in so we try to right because I, I'm, I mean, I remember days that you know my mother would you know come in and drop me off on on a Saturday, and it was always what you would can can consider. You guys set the bar. It, it's one of those barbershops that you know you could bring a businessman in, you could bring a family. You know, a woman could bring, come in there with with her kids, or the, fel- the fellas just the fellas could hang out. You know what I mean? And, and so when I look and you know, and I I have goals and some things I want to do, and, and that's the bar. For me, that that I strive for. Um, were there ever any challenges in terms of, of of partnership, like bringing in new barbers? How did you and Lum decide, like, okay, we we, we got new barbers, you know, we we want to be on the same page? How did those things having a fifty fifty split? How did that with ownership? How did that work? Uh, we just talk about it, you know, you know, okay. and that was it, you know, was no problem, okay, you know. Okay. Everybody need a chance, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, we had a lot of them. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I just have, I have a question. Um, just just looking at the barber landscape today and speaking with you, um, it just seems like the uh, middle age barber shop, a barber for middle age um, individuals, just doesn't really exist in today, especially in in this community. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that, and and why maybe it just doesn't? Well, we uh, the barbers need to get together and form an association, you know, and talk everything over and try to pool some money together and build a nice barbershop. Right, have some yeah. some ownership. Yeah. Mm hmm. That that's and and yeah that that that's big, that's that's big. Um, do so you think do you think that's possible? I mean, I mean somebody that's for fifty five years you've seen a lot and you've seen just the way the society, not just just among how black people move and and act. Is it possible? Do you do you feel? Say that one more time. I'm, say, I'm saying, I know you said that we need to, the barbers need to come together, form an association. Just with you seeing a lot in 55 years being a barber, do you feel that that is possible? I mean, it just seems like everybody is for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible. All they got to do is say that where each one can so much money now, you know, like a share. Right. And uh, get them a lawyer, top lawyer, and let him have it. Right. Put them in the money, be safe, you right. know. Right. Each one of them own a part of it. Right. Speaking of lawyers, just in, in conducting business with uh, Mr. Lum, did you ever have to get lawyers involved or was the handshake and, and the values and the morals and ethics just good? enough when you all conduct a business? That's all we did. Yeah. But when we deal with someone else, we used to, we had a lawyer. Right. Okay. You know, okay. We had the same lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, at what point, what, so, so, everyone knows in, in our community and, you know, just those who, who are listening, um, it's been the longest, um, black owned barbershop, longest, you know, bar, you know, barbershop period in, in, in our community. Right. And we know um, you, you decided to, you know, retire from being active in the barbershop every day. And you decided um, to sell the barbershop. What, what year did you retire? Did you decide to um, retire from being in the barbershop and decided to sell the business? Oh, I, I didn't retire. You know, I just semi semi retired. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you still you, uh, right? You still actively cut hair, but just in terms of being a full time barber and wanting to to deal with the ins and outs of just being a businessman on top of cutting hair. When did you decide that that was enough and and you were ready to um, just step back from ownership? I was you know, I was looking for one of the barbers in there to you know step up and take it over. You know, mm -hmm. I used to. Everybody had a key, so I said, "Once you open one day a week, you know, mm -hmm. I, I tried that and see you're gonna do it." <laughs> right. But it didn't work out, so. So you just couldn't find that that stronghold to to anchor everything. Um, yeah. So at, at that point, you you decide decide to sell it. Yeah, okay. uh, we had the whole building, you know. Right, right. Yeah. All all three suites. Okay. Right. Okay, and and. Just to go back, what year was that particular building? When did you guys have that building um, built? Oh, we moved in there in two thousand. In two thousand, okay, okay, wow, okay. When we when we sold it, we own a we own a whole eighty six thousand dollars on it. Wow, wow, wow. So, two more questions that I have, and that's it. And I don't know if um, Jinx has any more, but two things. What advice would you have for barbers of today and also the young and up up and coming barbers? What what advice would you give us? Oh, just 
try to get to know the other barbers, you know, and try to be friends with them. Okay. In in your shop or both in and outside of your shop as far as oh, other shops? In and out in and outside. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now now what about also from from just the professional side in terms of of um taxes, um, retirement, things of the, of that nature. Oh, oh you gotta set up some retirement, you gotta pay in the social security too. Right. That's right. a must. Right. Right, to say, say that you got to step away from the chair at some point in time. Oh, yeah. Okay. You now, don't know when it's going to happen. Was there somebody that gave you that that wisdom? And what yeah. age? How, how? What age of, when you were, were able to get that wisdom? One of my customers in 1968. Oh, wow. Eight. Wow. So you, you paid I spent two years. I spent two years in the military. Okay. So when I got out in '68, he started doing my taxes. Mm. You know, mm. tell me what I need to do. Right, right, and and so those are the things ultimately that allowed you to um, go into business to be able to to buy a building and, and things of that nature and, and and have that ownership, right? Yes, absolutely. So that that's good credit. Yeah. Good credit. Right. Good credit. So, so how important and valuable in your eyes is ownership? You know, it's real. It's, it's real important. I didn't know how important it was in a soul, soul of barbershop. Right. Because I was going to do something else, and uh, right. you didn't have that, right. you know, to bargain with. Right. So that's just... just Extremely important. I, I know so many shops, you know, mm-hmm. um, want to to, you know, ha- have their name and, and, you know, have that reputation. But when you're in somebody else's building, then they dictate the pace. You know, they figure out, OK, we, we want to sell. Then you have to take your name and your equipment um, and figure out where, where next to set up shop. And so that's kind of something that I've been um, thinking about long, long and hard. Um you know, within the last year, year and year and a half, in terms of barbering, and and then to also be able to do what you and Lum did, to be able to create and leave that legacy. Um, you know, not not many, if any, have been able to accomplish. You know, after you guys or or, or during that stretch, what you guys have been able to accomplish, or were able to accomplish in terms of ownership. Um, so, w- with that being said, if if there were any regrets if there were anything that you would do different um as, as a barber what would it be or or just period well the first regret what i told you earlier mm-hmm. I, I, I would have spent more time with my daughters okay and okay. the second one is i wouldn't have never sold rose and taylor out of how to lease it out okay yeah okay. That's, so, so you would you the, that legacy that you created you you realized that it probably would have been um best just to keep it and in, in, in lease it um yeah yeah I, I i i definitely agree with you um it's one of those things we're looking at where um you know i think myself as a middle-aged barber and just the barbers in general um, at this stage, we have to do a better job or, or at least give that effort, like you said, having an association, having those relationships and, and grooming um, young barbers. Because, you know, yeah. if if we're trying to create legacies, but there's nobody to um, pass that torch to and take it on, then it's almost like, you know, you put all this hard work in and, and, and it's almost like being in vain. You know, you, you created yeah. something. Um, for us and, and for our community, it wasn't just about yourself. You gave something in, in, in Mr. Lum and, um, you know, my uncle Leroy and, and Harry and, and all, all the guys that, that came through the barbershop and, and worked there gave so much to this community. And like you said, you put in so many hours. Sometimes you realize that, man, the, the time I gave to the barbershop and the community, even though it made money, I lost out on other areas. I sacrificed other areas to give a community so much of them. And then when you create that legacy, 
then there's nobody to, to, to pass that torch to. And that has to be frustrating. You know? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, right. man, it, it's, it's, and, and just keeping those license cutting for 55 years, that in it of itself speaks, um, the passion in not only the passion of barbering, but the passion that you guys have for the community. You know, um, I know for me, one of the, one of my favorite things, you know, is being able to interact with people. That 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 that's something that's special. Yeah, that's yeah. I I got it. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I I, I was just. I, I mean, forgive me. I, I don't want to offend you, but uh, you keep a license. I'd imagine you've gone up on your cut. You're not charging, you know, <laughs> two fifty no more for a cut, Mr. Taylor, are you? <laughs> uh, what did you say? I said I'd imagine you're not charging. I, I can't come get a cut for two dollars and fifty cents today, can I? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what you Darn say? it. <laughs> you say absolutely not. Man, it, it's um Go ahead. Jeff. I got I got one more question. I promise this is my last question. I mean I grew up in this community, uh, as I said, I went to uh, Mr. Henry, but Rosen Taylor, that the shop, the name, it wrong. I just, can you explain to the people, like, how good did it feel at the height when all the, the, the chairs were full, um, the reputation, the, just the name, just when you, when you were just representing the 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 business the shop with your name attached to it like can you put that into words how good it felt to really put your all into it make the sacrifices you made and knowing that it is as we say today is popping uh, I don't know I can't give myself that kind of credit. Huh. It was it was everybody, you know, huh. all of us, all the barbers, all right? Special alum, right. you know, S super super humble. And Leroy and Leroy, super humble. And I tell you something, the guy we haven't mentioned, uh, he he was responsible for building the new one was John Lee Johnson. Okay, oh, John okay, Lee. All right. that, that, definitely, yeah. definitely a, a staple in, in our community, um, an yeah. activist. Um, you know, a leader, a black leader in our community. Okay. Could I say another thing? When I first got on First Street in 1964, mm -hmm. we had uh, we had a us, you know, a laundry. Okay. We had a restaurant. Okay. Okay. And then we had a little small grocery store. Mm. Yeah, and then we had a liquor store way ahead on the corner. All black on? No, that wasn't a liquor store, wasn't it? Okay. Cut, cut everything else for us. So, so, with you speaking on, on, on that, you know, and I've heard so much from from you, you know, my parents, my relatives, um, you know, just older um, ladies and gentlemen in the community about how, how much more self-sufficient we were um, as a people in our communities. Now you look at that and, and, and not so much, right? Um, even from the, the, the standpoint of the barbershop, I remember, you know, um, that was if somebody came into town, you know, back in the day and said, hey, where can I get my hair cut? What, what's the shop? Rose and Tate, with, with, without a doubt, you know, and then, then the whip, you know, brought itself in and, and, and kind of, you know, piggybacked off that and was that, that space where the, the younger gentleman um, and the younger Eric could go at, at some point in time, you know, shout out to them as well. But you guys set, you guys set a, a, a standard and now we look around and we don't, we're not self-sufficient like that. And we don't have these businesses. We, we don't have these things. What, what do you think is, is the reasoning behind that? Oh, boy, we got to, I guess we have to motivate uh, young, the younger people to uh, take over when somebody else, uh, well, what happened, you know, like I said, they had a laundry next door to us, mm -hmm. cleaner, mm -hmm. Miss Tenzi cleaner. Okay. Miss Tenzi's still living. Mm. Uh, okay. 
they had uh, about three kids. I mean, daughters were there. But uh, after her husband passed, mm-hmm. she couldn't handle by herself, so she had to close down. Wow. Wow. Then we had a few garbage routes. It's about three black garbage routes the mm-hmm. same way. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and you know, it's interesting for me, um, and, and, and I'm going to say this, and some people may take take offense to it, right? But I, I feel like our era, you, you guys in your era created something. You created legacies for us to take on. And sometimes, you know, the formal education and things that we push so hard and we want um, for our children and those in our family that we forget about the entrepreneurial things that we've created to leave, leave legacies. And, and I kind of feel like that's kind of what happened. We're looking at things that, you know, in our minds are so much greater, you know, that to me as a barber and at this point realizing it at, at 44 years old, something that I didn't see maybe five years, six years ago, right. Is there's no other feeling like my ability, my, my want, and, and hunger to own a barbershop and be totally self-sufficient um, outweighs any other feeling that, that I've ever felt outside of of my, my wife, my mother, my kids, um, just that passion and, and that rush. And I think, you know, we, we took advantage and maybe in our, our our communities, maybe we didn't push as, as much as we should have about the meaning behind those things. Because when you talk about those things and like I said, my mother, my father, my uncles, I mean, I just had this vision in my head, but unfortunately, you know, I don't know if I'll ever live to see what you guys were able not to only see, but be a part of, you know? Yeah. That's wow. Yeah. that's Don't give up. No, de- def- <laughs> definitely not. You know, I mean, but, but having you on here and talking about things like this gives gives me that passion you know it, you, you and when you know and you can touch and you can speak to someone who's done it then you know it's possible but like you said just bringing everybody together and getting everybody on the same page and i think what you're talking about and the ability for our listeners to hear this i think this is going to be extremely impactful and i'm not speaking for myself but my buddy jinx i, I know we feel honored because not many people can can say that they're able to sit down and have a conversation and sit down and and talk to um, their barber who who not only w- was cutting their age range as hair but their father and maybe their grandfather. Like it is crazy because you you were the first one to cut my stepson's hair. Um, me and my wife have been, well, yeah. Me and me and my wife have been. Um, together for 25 years he, he's 27 so before she and i got together um you know when he turned of age and got his hair cut you were the first barber to ever put clippers to my my stepson's head okay thanks and, and so just to, that's, that's 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 you know that's great i mean so you've been able to you know you, you you're a living legend and, and you know we we want to as they say, we, we want to give you your bouquet when you can smell them. So we we are honored. We're intrigued by your story. We're 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 privileged, um, and we're thankful at the same time. Not only me as a barber, but just as a community, we we are extremely privileged um, to have had you know someone like you you know as a barber running a business in our community, and you know Lum and and you guys all showing us how it should be. Greatly appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. And and I appreciate your 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 humble spirit as well. So, um, with that being said, I I don't I don't have any other questions. I'm just letting it soak in. Yeah, we we actually uh, talked off wax, and he gave us more time than he said he had. So right, right. we we don't we don't want to. Overstep our right, boundaries, right? right. <laughs> so, well, Mr. Taylor, we appreciate a lot you. more information, though. Absolutely. Oh well, yeah, uh, we 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 definitely love. You know, hopefully, we all can be on the other side of COVID and and right. do this face to face and Absolutely. have a part two, uh, and just we would really celebrate in each other's presence. Absolutely, we would love to. You just um, let us know we're, we're we're flexible. We're on your time schedule. Um, so you just let us know. 
Okay. All right. All right. So we we, we greatly um, appreciate it, and we'll let you go. So you know you have to tend to, to family matters. Um, but again, thank you for your time. Oh, no problem. Okay. At all. All right. So I I, I I also just one more thing. I have to publicly thank you um, for for um, the barber chair. Um, oh, okay. I, I received the barber chair from from Mr. Joe. Um, I refurbished it, um, turned it back into looking new, and um, that was his gift to me. And, and I greatly, um, I greatly appreciate it. And I, I will, I will take care of it. Um, and it's something that I'll have um, forever, and I'll cherish that. I might have another one for you. I was looking through the shed out here. Please let me know, and I will be there to pick it up. Uh, just one day, just come out and take a look at it. Okay, I sure will. I'll, I'll, matter of fact, I'll give you a call um, tomorrow since I'm not cutting. I'll give you a call mid-morning. You just let me know um, what your schedule is. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Joe, um, you have a great evening. You also. All right, and All I'll right. be in contact with you. It's nice, nice meeting you also. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Okay. You got yeah. All right. You do the same. I'll give you a holler later on. All right. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. So, Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Taylor, Rose and Taylor of the Rose and Taylor, Champaign, Illinois, represent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's something big because you know I I feel like we're we're privileged, you know, to have someone. Um, I would assume, you know, not to throw ages out there, I would assume late um, 70s, or early 80s to, you know, literally everyone else um, in his age range, you know, that he cut hair with, that he started the shop is no longer with us. Yeah. Um, and so to be able to give him his roses while um, he's still here and let him know how much he means not only to this community, but the, but the industry, you know, we've brought on some, some heavy hitters, right? We oh, brought yeah. on some, some guys that are extremely good barbers, but if it's not for guys um, like Mr. Joe and Rose and Taylor, we're not doing what we do. Um, there's no I Cut My Way Out podcast. There's none of that, right? And he didn't do it by himself, but just the error in and of itself. They sacrificed and paved the way for us, and, and man. And not only that, uh, like we always say, uh, why you why you podcast? Why, well, now, now Joe Taylor's voice going to be able to be seen and heard forever. Forever. You know, so as long as the Internet exists, his voice, you can Google Joe Taylor, Rose and Taylor. And somewhere along your search, this podcast will come up. So absolutely. Absolutely. uh, That's 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 our contribution. Absolutely. One of our contributions. Man, to to, to the to the culture, to the community. Um. Type people, I mean, all of it, man. Yeah. Like, like you know, I I, I have vivid memories um, right. of going to to the barber shop, and it's crazy because I always said, even when I got away from barber as a, as a young man, you know, I wanted to own a barber shop. Now, I never viewed necessarily me being behind a chair in that barber shop, just watching them, the fun they had, how it functioned. It was something that that was intriguing, and barbering was as necessary and as important then. As it is now. Yep. You know what I mean? Well, uh, with all that being said, I guess we can conclude this this episode here. I cut my way out podcast. By the way, we 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 we're only supposed to have Mr. Taylor for about 20, 30 minutes. So um, we didn't get in. We we tried to get into some of our intros, but. If if you listen to this show, you know I'm at Kenneth Jinx, and and I am at a underscore knocks the bar before, um, also at <laughs> a knocks underscore beard culture four. Yep, and our uh, IG, our our podcast IG, I cut my way out pod underscore pod, I believe. Um, Put us in the search. I, I cut my way out. We'll come up because I've done it. Right. So I cut my way out podcast everywhere where you can listen to podcasts. We have a YouTube viewership. Um, 
And that's a wrap. Uh, well, lastly, um, as I've continued to close out the last few times, just want to thank um, the Clipper companies, Andes, Wall, Bablis, um, Oyster, everybody out there who's given us the opportunity to do what we do to allow us to cut our way out. Um, just the inspiration um, with, with guys like Mr. Joe Taylor that use Andy's Clippers, Andy's Masters, you know, back in the 70s. We just um, appreciate, um, you know, what, what, what you have given us, um, the tools you've given us to work um, with to, to cut our way out in, in service um, communities all over the world. We appreciate it. Peace. I used to dream as a kid on the porch of the crib and make it big and one day endorse where I live. Hard time, my mom had to do it all. Working two jobs to provide while I pursued the ball. Hoop dreams, no problem doing my own thing. Stepped in the world to get a win for the home team. Late speakers for the crowd in the bleachers. This will get away from the left in life. Five nine, don't follow the league guidelines. Hard of a chat, but I gotta touch my pride now. Off the college for the knowledge, try my hand at math. But one call from back home really changed the path. My first born, now I got a mouth to feed. Told the Southeast, I got a whole new crop to lead. Young father, odd jobs, every day is real. Turn to the street, try to eat or maybe pay a bill. Not proud of it, but I got it cooking good. But prison time on the mind wasn't looking good. I can't afford the price, so I tried the corporate life. Something wasn't sitting right. Every night I'm talking like, like they don't appreciate all my hard work. So I went ahead and jumped, let the Lord work. Beer culture 2020, yeah, we're taking over. From the clipper to the hoodie that we're drinking over. I put the clippers in my hand I got a whole different plan I got a key out of the train I'm hoping that it's taking out Trying to come away now I put the clippers in my hand I got a whole different plan I got a key out of the train I'm hoping that it's taking out Trying to come away now Peace y'all, we out Shout out DC We love it DC Had to play it Great, Greatly appreciate it We'll tag you. We will shout you out. Um, good luck. Oh man, I'm 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 slipping. I we got got some new material. Put some respect on my name. We finally out, y'all. <laughs>